Disaster Risk Financing, DRF, has great potential to improve the humanitarian system. DRF enables us to proactively manage disaster risk, and it's based on three key principles. Understand the risks and hazards faced in different countries, and use scientific models to quantify these risks, and agree triggers or danger thresholds. Plan interventions in advance of disasters. Pre-position funding so action can occur in anticipation of a crisis. Using DRF increases the efficiency, speed and the predictability of crisis management and allows humanitarians to act before risks turn into crises, reducing costs and the lives lost in any disaster. DRF requires actions to be planned and designed before the worst happens so it has the added benefit of enhancing transparency and accountability, both downstream towards the people at risk and upstream towards the donors. However, a DRF system is only as successful as the scientific models it's based on. Scientific modeling is an attempt to predict what might happen or be happening, and all predictions have some uncertainty attached to them. The difference between what a scientific model predicts and what actually happens is often called basis risk. Basis risk exists because our ability to replicate or measure the complexities of natural processes through modeling is limited. And a model is always a simplification of reality. Given that modeling is therefore less than perfect, how can we develop the best possible models and understand uncertainties and minimize them where possible? And what guidelines should be followed to ensure we maximize the humanitarian impact of a DRF system? The Drought Risk Finance Science Laboratory has developed a guide for the responsible use of scientific data and modeling for humanitarian decision making. The guide should act as an interface between providers of data and models and the humanitarian users of those products. It supports users to ensure there is due care in the design of the system and providers better understand what users require for responsible application of their work to humanitarian ends. The users and providers should work together, following the guide along a pathway via eight checkpoints. Working in this sequence will ensure the best possible data sets are selected, while reducing the chance of basis risk. Checkpoint 1. Start off by creating a data and decision framework. The first three questions for users to ask are, in order to enable the action, what do we want to do? What do we need to know and when do we need to know it? The users can then work together with the providers to explore the system to be built, basing it on three elements. What questions does the data system have to answer? What decisions need to be taken and when? What are the proposed or possible data sets to use? Checkpoint 2. Next, define the analysis lenses. It won't be practical to test the system from all possible angles, so the most informative variables should be identified. For example, what magnitude and what frequency of events are we considering? What should the intervention timing or window be? Anticipation, response or recovery? What geographical resolution works best? Once checkpoints 1 and 2 are complete, a clear due diligence framework will have been prepared between the users and providers. Checkpoint 3. All available data should now be optimized. Lack of historical data can be a common problem when modeling a hazard. Providers and users should agree on what historical data can be used for testing and where there are opportunities to strengthen it and fill the gaps in a justifiable and auditable way, then it should be done. Multiple sets of historical data variables are often the best approach so that different parts of the model can be tested from physical hazards through to human impact. Checkpoint 4. Now the data providers can complete the first set of testing. Uncertainty tests should be a comparison between different data sets to examine whether they agree or disagree with each other. This will reveal the level of uncertainty across the DRF system being built, 
and the influence of external conditions on potential basis risk. Checkpoint 5. Skill testing uses known data from past events and inputs it into each model to see how well the results match what actually happened. This indicates a level of skill for each of the datasets and suggests how well they are likely to perform in the future. It should also indicate when there are instances of low skill and high uncertainty and what the drivers of this might be. Checkpoint 6. Once a measure of uncertainty and skill has been identified, it must be communicated in a simple and logical way to ensure that all stakeholders are aware of the findings. This should include the model's strengths and limitations. Checkpoint 7. Next, the providers and users should agree which models or datasets provide the best predictors of historical outcomes. This will determine which data and models are most reliable in answering the initial questions set out in the decision framework in Checkpoint 1, and therefore should form the primary model and data on which the main trigger can be set. Checkpoint 8. You will now have a well-designed primary model to trigger the DRF system based on critical analysis and appropriate for the level and type of financing and response. But basis risk will never be eliminated with a primary model alone. For the system to become operational and flexible for action, the primary model must be complemented by a secondary monitor, consisting of a set of independent and near real-time data sources, potentially with secondary triggers. The secondary monitor should be compared with the primary model to manage basis risk and decision-making in real-time. Following the guide through these eight checkpoints will ensure the development of a robust and well-designed DRF system with known limitations and contribute to a more coordinated, predictable and efficient humanitarian system. For more information on disaster risk financing and to download the complete guide from the Drought Risk Finance Science Laboratory, please visit startnetwork.org.